So before I actually got here, I googled the appropriate amount of time for a small talk with the crowd. So here goes. <laughs> this morning, someone told me, I think it was my mom. No, no, no. She told me not to wear black. Oops. Okay. <laughs> it was my horoscope. My horoscope said, Scorpio, the stars are aligned for you. You're going to experience something new and you're going to enjoy it. Okay. Well, it's true, this is new for me. I'm usually on stage like celloing or guitaring, <laughs> not necessarily talking. Um, will I enjoy it? I guess we'll see. So here goes. What is bliss? That does seem to be the question of the day. Webster's Dictionary would define bliss as complete happiness. I don't know about you, but I think that's an awfully broad and oversimplified definition for a noun that is actually quite complex in my opinion. My fellow classmates and I have been posed the question, what is your bliss? But before I could dive in and even contemplate my answer, I'd have to define bliss myself. So after much research and brainstorming and discussing with others on the topic, I found my definition of bliss. So now, if you want to stop me in the hall and be like, hey, what's bliss? I could answer. My definition of bliss is bliss, ecstasy, euphoria, paradise. It has a lot of names, all trying to portray that same indescribable feeling, the feeling of elation, pure happiness, ultimate contentment. So yeah, I know that's pretty wordy, but to define something so complex, I think it's befitting. So what is my bliss? It's a very good question. <laughs> For only 15 years on this planet, I haven't had nearly enough life experiences to know what makes me blissful. Um, but I have a pretty good idea. You're probably thinking it can't be too difficult to know what makes you happy. But on the contrary, I found it mind-bogglingly hard to answer that question. What is your bliss? What really does make me happy? Give me that feeling of rapture, make my heart a flutter, per se. But after much self-analyzing and discussing with others, I found my bliss. My bliss is enjoying the little things in life that are catalysts to my happiness. Take my word on it, that list is lengthy and we'd be here all day. So I've narrowed that down to one. Webster's Dictionary would define my bliss as the action of making the corners of your mouth turn up in an expression that shows happiness, what we call a smile. So what exactly is a smile, and what's the science behind smiling? For something that seems so simple, the smile is actually a, a quite complex facial feature that coincidentally happens to be the universal sign of happy. So how does the smile work, and why does it make us feel so great? When we see do or hear something that makes us happy. Signals are sent from our cerebral cortex. That's the part of our brain that controls the high order things, such as language and memories. So from there, signals are sent to our spinal cord, which controls the movement in our body, as is of that in our face. So signals from there are sent to the muscles in our face. The corners of our mouth turn up, the muscles contract, and we express what we know as a smile. So that's how the smile works, but why does it make us feel so good? So when we smile, um, the positive feedback, positive feedback is sent back to our brain, the reward mechanism part of our brain is triggered, and endorphins are released. Endorphins are also known as the feel-good chemicals of the body, and when released make you feel pleasure and happiness, thus why we feel so great when we smile. So what are the benefits to smiling? There are numerous benefits to smiling, and the best thing is that it's free, and you have the power to control that. The benefits are plentiful, and overall improve your health and happiness. A simple smile in a difficult situation can lower your anxiety and stress. Right before I came out here, I was shaking so badly, but I smiled, and I guess it kind of went away. <laughs> um, a simple smile can also increase your productivity, empathy, trust, attention, and of course, attractiveness. Multiple studies have been conducted, all concluding with the same results.
People perceive others loads more attractive when they smile, rather than with a sourpuss face, which makes sense. So smile. It makes you feel good and look good. <laughs> it's also contagious. It's almost impossible to not smile when someone's smiling right at you. That is, if it's a real, genuine smile, which brings us next to our next topic. You may not notice it, but when we judge whether someone's smile is real or not, we actually mimic their smile. Their eyes also play a huge giveaway. We all know what it's like to have to stand in front of that amazing statue of that historical figure you've never even heard of, or that rusty but significant plaque, or even have to take a corny family photo next to some tree that your mom finds cool on the side of the road. And you all pile out of the car after nine hours of being, it, being in it and stand next to the tree, while your sister's hugging on you as tightly as she can, knowing you won't let go in fear of it taking longer. And of course, while your mom's urging you to go on, that one cute guy walks by. And you just smile through the pain to get it over with as quickly as possible. We've all been there. It's pretty relatable. <laughs> Whereas when we are completely enthralled with excitement because we finally found that one tree that spoke to us, or full of happiness because it's finally our turn to hug on our sister while she smiles through the pain, or full of giddy because that horoscope I made up earlier, oh, <laughs> yeah, I made it up. <laughs> so um, those smiles are genuine, and you can tell because your whole face is smiling, including your eyes. Ever wonder why kids seem so happy, a little too giddy to handle? Yes, it's true, they don't have to deal with taxes, or stress, or the monotony of the cubicle life, or even have as much work, or children, obviously, as adults do. But did you know they smile up to 400 times a day? That's a ton of endorphin for such a small body, and would it explain why they're almost always happy? Whereas adults smile on average significantly less than that. On average, per day, women smile 62 times, and men only eight. <laughs> yeah, let that sink in. OK. <laughs> Did you also know there are 19 different types of smiling? And like body language, different smiles perceive different things about you, one of those being the smug. The smug smile can make others perceive you as arrogant, or maybe even ridiculing. The flirtatious, which is obviously very playful and welcoming. And the open mouth, which sends good energy and positive vibes to the person receiving. So on a more serious note, and in conclusion, what is my advice? Smile whenever the opportunity arises, and find the small things that make you happy. Knowing what makes you happy is the first step in being happy. Recognize and acknowledge when you're feeling happy and you will achieve bliss. It's okay to let someone's small compliment make you smile and pass it on. And it's totally fine to laugh at a corny joke, even if it's your own. I do that all the time. <laughs> yes, we go through this chaotic, beautiful journey we call life that has suffering and goal setting gone wrong. But it has beautiful things, too, like nature and bees and music. So why don't we smile through it? Determine the little things that make you happy. Surround yourself with those things. Immerse yourself in all the good things and allow yourself to be completely filled with happiness, what Webster's Dictionary would define as simply bliss. Thank you. <laughs>